NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. I'm Alex Laverson, and with me is our producer, Mr. Angelo Parada. And, um, Angelo, I'm just glad my voice is getting a little better. Yeah. Yeah, it, it took about, what, like two months, you know, but it's coming around. It's coming around. Um, the other thing I'm happy about is that we have now the Steeler schedule. We were the full NFL schedule, really. But, you know, us being Steeler fans, um, there's a couple ga- no, no, don't listen Cleveland. to him. Cleveland. Cleveland, right? Yeah. There's a couple games here I'm excited to see. But I am kind of confused because the Steelers are opening up against the Patriots on September 8th in Foxborough, but doesn't the Super Bowl champion usually open up on a Thursday night game? I mean, they're really They're matter. free to change their mind. I mean, jeez. I just wonder why, though. You know what I mean? But I guess ultimately it doesn't really matter. Well, um, maybe when you're not really the Super Bowl champion and you've had to have all the calls go your way. Maybe that's why. They put a little asterisk next to them, right? Yeah. <coughs> well, we're not going down that road again. The Steelers picked to win. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, looking at their schedule, it is a pretty exciting schedule. Their second week, their home opener against the Seattle Seahawks. One o'clock game on Fox. And then um, week four, or not, I'm skipping ahead of week. Week three at the 49ers. The 425 game. That's another interesting matchup. And uh, so this is a, obviously an NFC West type of deal going on in the schedule here. And um, going up against week four, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the, who are now perfectless. Because they're perfect, now a Raider with Antonio Brown. And, uh, you know, honestly, I don't see a reason why they can't reach the playoffs. I mean, I'm not going to go over every single game on the schedule, but they should at least get 10, 11 wins at the very least. You know. Now, how do you feel about Tennessee? I don't really have a preference for them. Or I just wonder because you wore your blue shirt and your Cleveland Browns open up with Tennessee. <laughs> Not my Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Listen, I don't know why you keep saying that. But speaking of Tennessee, how about I guess there was an ESPN. They did like a March Madness bracket with the NFL best fan bases. And they came down to the two best fan bases were the Tennessee Titans and the Cleveland Browns. I mean, I don't... What? The Tennessee Titans? I don't, I, I don't understand what their rationale behind that was. I, I mean, maybe they're a lot better than I realize. I don't know. Um, the Browns well, are going to kind of see. They have a decent fan, home fan base, but I don't think the Cleveland Browns or the Tennessee Titans travel as well as the Steelers. No, I think the Steelers have the I think Steelers have the best traveling fan base. I think they have the most fans, honestly. Um, you know, the Cowboy Americas team, I think that's kind of outdated. You know, I'm, we're going to sound biased, but I really do feel like the Steelers are the best fan base in the NFL, but that's getting off track here. Um, another game I'm really, really want to get tickets for is Week 10 when they play the L.A. Rams at home because my boy and former Pitt alum, Aaron Donald, I want to see him back at Heinz Field playing. And then, like I said before in previous shows, when his career is over, he's going to be the best defensive player in NFL history. All right? I want to go see him play. And he just donated a million dollars back to Pitt Athletics. So you got to love the guy. All right? Here um, we go. You see how he always works in? He either works in Cleveland or Pitt. Or, I, he's a very predictable person. I'm telling you. I, I still don't see where you get the Cleveland thing. Because I, like I like the Cavaliers to the closest thing. Well, where are they? 
They're the NFL, uh, NBA, uh, yeah, NBA is over. No, let me ask you a question. No, no, the NBA isn't over. The Sixers and the Nets in tonight's game. I hate, I hate Philadelphia teams. I can't root for Philly teams. So is I'm going to go with the Nets. I mean, I want them to win. I don't know enough about you know, either team to give like no, a... No, the series is tied at one. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying I can't give like a, a serious enough prediction or analysis on the series because I don't know those teams really well. I don't know the NBA really well. All I know is I just don't like Philadelphia teams in general all now, across the board. if they're in your state, are they your home team? Or if they're across the state line, who's your home team? Well, think about it. So, like, technically Youngstown is in a different state than, obviously, Newcastle, PA. Well, but let's say we lived in Harrisburg. We don't live in Harrisburg. We I said, let's Cass. say we lived in Harrisburg. Okay, let's say we lived in Harrisburg. Would you be rooting for the Ravens? The Ravens? You mean the Eagles? No, I mean the Ravens, because the Ravens are real close, almost uh, closer no. than... And, and, and the Redskins go practice right there. No, because this is what I think. You know, for example, there's too much of a rivalry between the city of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. If there wasn't a rivalry, then you could kind of make like, okay, maybe they're the home team type of thing. But in like the NBA, for example, Pittsburgh doesn't have an NBA team. Yeah, I mean, so there's no like dissension there. That's why I would consider the Cavs technically the hometown team. And it's like, you know, like if you're a student at YSU and you live in Newcastle, you get that regional um, discount because you only live like 30 minutes away. See, I'm... It goes, I, it goes by distance, I feel like, for the most part. And like... And, well, it's state lines. Nah, I mean, what's a state line? Yeah, I mean... Like, seriously. You heard it here what's first. A what's a state line? But let's take a break here, and then we have a lot more to talk about in our last two segments. But uh, now a word from our sponsors. This program furnished by the MAD Unit. Mobile Auto Detailing. See Michael Sad at themadunit.com. Holy snowman, it's the Turf Bar. Home of great sandwiches, appetizers, tacos, you name it, they have it at the Turf Bar. It's just the right food you'll enjoy. Those special drinks, they're there too. And get that nice cold beverage, relax, enjoy the Turf Bar. If you ain't there, you should be. Hello friends, Pinella Brothers, 1701 Hamilton Street, provided funding for this program. Great food and drink, Pinella Brothers. And welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. Spurs and the Nuggets. Spurs and Nuggets. Um, you know, I always respected the Spurs because they're such a successful franchise, but they're not like the showboaty, glamorous type of franchise. They win. And they win respectably. And a lot of people say they're one of the most boring franchises in NBA history. Look, you got, you know, Tim Duncan, who's a great athlete. If you're winning championships, you're winning championships. You're doing it the right way. I have respect for the Spurs. Again, I don't know enough about them in their current situation. Are they old? Yeah. That's why I asked you this old great one. Yeah. Now, fine. the Pens, they're old. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and they went down 4-0, and this series is tied 1-1. So what's the difference? Look, a lot of it, matchups, intensity, you know, there's so many factors that go into it. I feel like us as Penguin fans, we get spoiled. We got to witness three Stanley Cups, okay? We got to witness them um, go to, what, five? Three, it was three Stanley Cup championships and four visits, if I'm correct. I mean, what more can we want? And people are saying, oh, woe is me. You know, this team frustrates me. Look, bottom line, the Pens made the playoffs. Yeah, they got swept. But that doesn't mean they're done for the future. I mean, I remember in 2000, what was it, 2012, people thought this team was done when they got destroyed by the Flyers when Ned Bosma was coach. 
they can rebound. They can recover. Now, now there's rumors again of getting Malkin. Could be looking for a, you know change of scenery. How many times have we heard this? I don't think he's going anywhere. I hope he doesn't. Um, but listen, the bottom line: you got Sidney Crosby, best um, best hockey player in the world. They'll be fine. Okay. Now there's only one thing left to go to. And that is the NHL. And Penn's out of it without, like, a blink see, of an eye. See, someone's calling you to let you know that we were on the topic of the NHL. Oh, we can get rid of this one real easy. There. Got rid of. There. Just press a button. Mm -hmm. And it's gone. Good. Pens. What about them? They're too old. No. Do you change coaches? By Christmas time of next year, if they're in playoff contention by a thread, or if they're out of play playoff contention by a thread, I should say, then maybe. Because the probably actually because in the NHL coaching the coaching lifespan is so short I feel like for coaches it's different than any other sport and you make a change a coaching change that could be enough to ignite your team you know to a Stanley or Cup as we see yeah, well yeah it could go either way you know what I mean so as we've seen that's helped the Pens before in the past obviously win two cups so again. I, I would, if if they're out of playoff contention, even by a little, um, just to give like a spark, ignite them a little bit. But again, you also run that risk of them being deflated. So, but you know, I always feel like when you have Sidney Crosby and Getty Malkin, you're, you should be in win now mode. Okay, now we're gonna turn our attention to a very special sport after we take this break. Was it rugby? Badminton. <laughs> All right, well, now a word from our sponsors. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. And welcome back to our third and final segment of the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. Hike, hike, hike. So college this, football. So this was the mystery sport you were talking about? Sure, because there's some things that got to take. College football taking off Thursday the 29th. Mm-hmm. Clemson's at home against Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. Will Clemson be able to carry a repeat banner around? I'll tell you what, Clemson is such a special uh, college dynasty going on right now. Making the ACC proud. You know, even if you're a Pitt fan, you're in the ACC, you can still be proud that you're in the division with the national champions. Um, I, I I hope they can, honestly, because, you know, realistically, I don't think Pitt's going to beat them, you'll know, be able to, you know, beat them or win the conference outright. Um, so I feel like Clemson's probably really the only ACC team that can continue to carry the division or the conference. Um, Pitt. Man, what is this going to be your number five for Narduzzi? Yeah. He, I, I'll tell you what, man. He has a, maybe a handful of more years left, maybe like two or three, maybe even two. If, if they have a losing season this year, I wonder if that could be the end of it for him. Probably not, but like, as I say, this year and next year, they don't at least get eight wins or crack the top 25. Then that might be. I wonder if that'll be enough for Heather Like, you know, to change head coaches. Well, here's something Heather might like. <laughs> Penn State 
is play in Idaho. Okay. They always pick those powers to start off with. I'm just, I'm just totally amazed at the powers that they pick. That's their system, though. There was a, they they stack up on what five cupcake out of conference games. So it's cupcakes, like, jeez. So it's like okay, Penn State's guaranteed five wins there. You know. Um, now the thing is, can Penn State get away with it because they have the fan support where they're going to sell out most games even if they do play in Idaho. You know what I mean? Is that a smart... If you're a Penn State, if you're a Penn State administrator, is that a smart strategy to load up on cupcakes? I think it gets nauseating after a while. It, it does. Does that help your team get positioned to make the college football Final Four? That's a thing. might be nauseating, but is it the smart thing to do? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a business, I feel... BYU and Utah, that's always a rivalry. Robert Morris plays Buffalo and Texas State at Texas A&M, just to name a few. And don't forget, Michigan plays Middle Tennessee. And Notre Dame, they're opening up with... And that's, and a, that's the last thing I want to I, talk to you about. I went about. to their blue-gold game. Oh, so you went there over the weekend? Yeah. And uh, the offense looks fine. I'm just uh, not poised about the defense. They have some work to do. So, how is Notre Dame going to be just as good as last year? Or is, can they make another title run? Yeah, they can make a title run. They've got to beat Georgia, Michigan, and Stanford on the road. They win on the road, they win at home, they're in, undefeated. So those three games are the... the key. Georgia first, Michigan October 28th, Stanford in November. So if Notre Dame shows up to those games, uh, you know, focused, not playing stupid football, you think they should beat those teams? Georgia will be rough. Michigan has an axe to grind because Notre Dame keeps pummeling them. Uh huh. Okay, and Stanford, I think, could be a win, but it's out there on the West Coast, and that's always tough. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be an interesting season, interesting season in college football for sure. If you're a Pitt fan, Penn State, or a Notre Dame fan, and uh, if you're an Ohio State fan, you know you might as well expect your team to probably be in the top five for the very end anyway. So uh, that's nauseating to me. But um, I think that's a wrap. Anything else you want to add for the show? Go Irish. Go Pitt. And go Penn State should then go athletics also. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a good day, everybody. A special thanks to the YMCA for caring about the Lawrence County community and providing funding for this program.